Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. It's that time of the month again where I talk to you about the performance of my solar PV system here in the UK. I talk to you about what the setup looks like, some of the key dates over the month, how much uh, electricity I've saved, how much surplus solar I've sent to hot water and charging cars and things like that. So let's roll the intro and get into it. Okay, so thanks for joining me. So we're gonna go through the solar performance for my system here in Worcestershire in the UK. So I'll put some information up on the screen as we go through things so that you can follow along. So I have a nine kilowatt solar array on my roof that is connected to a solar edge inverter, which is six kilowatts. So you'll see at some points in this video, um, obviously I'm peaking at six kilowatts uh, which we call clipping when it comes to solar stuff. So I can never generate more than that. Um, but th this works out really well in the winter. Connected to that, I have a Tesla Powerwall 2. So 14 kilowatt uh, battery storage with 13.5 kilowatts of usable um, energy that I can take from there up to five um, kilowatts and continuous peak. Uh, connected to that, I also have a my energy harvey which is connected then to a my energy zappy for charging our electric cars we have a 40 kilowatt nissan leaf and a long range dual motor polestar 2 which is 78 kilowatt battery uh, and then we also have the my energy eddy which is used for heating our hot water tank again with surplus solar this all comes together with uh, Octopus Energy. So that's a renewables based uh, energy provider. Uh, I've got a link down in the description. If you decide to move to them as an energy provider, you will get 50 pounds credit to your account as will I. And I'm on the Octopus Go tariff. So during the day, it's just under 14 pence per kilowatt. And in the early hours of the morning from half past 12 to half past four, it's only five pence a kilowatt. And I will cover a little bit about what my bills look like uh, in this video as well. So as I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, before I go through all the details, I am gonna cover off my energy uh, electricity bill. So it doesn't always come through every month, but it has come through uh, just before me doing this video, which is gonna cover quite a few months actually. So in between the 4th of March and the 3rd of May, so this is what this billing cycle is for, I've, um, as usual, consumed quite a lot of electricity, but also as usual, most of it is during off-peak. That's when we tend to charge the cars, heat the water if we haven't got enough solar surplus and fill up the battery um, if the days aren't so sunny as well. So during, um, again, from the 4th of March to the 3rd of May, we consumed 774.1 kilowatt hours of electricity during the off-peak times and 110.7 kilowatt hours during peak times. So as you can see, a large majority of that is happening uh, off-peak. So the off-peak costs uh, turn out to be 36.846 pence, excluding VAT, and our on-peak costs work out to be 114 pounds and 46 pence basically uh, of peak costs so the key thing for me to take away from that even though it is obviously high usage charging cars and running batteries and all that kind of stuff is it means that even though my total consumption is 884.8 kilowatt hours for you know those couple of months my average electricity cost is only 5.8 pence per kilowatt hour which is absolutely fantastic so this is why this setup really worked for me even though i always will have to pull from the grid with two evs um it's not um breaking the bank okay so now we'll talk about the solar performance for the month of april 2021 so as you can see on the screen here the system produced 1.01 megawatt hours of electricity uh, during the month which is pretty decent uh, we're able to consume 90% of that, so 0.91 megawatt hours was consumed, and we exported 0.11 megawatt hours. 
In terms of our consumption, obviously a little bit higher than that with the, the cars and stuff. Uh, so 1.23 megawatt hours electricity and um, we had to obviously import some of that. So 26% of our energy is imported there at 0.33 megawatt hours. So obviously that's uh, including those costs that I just gave you a moment ago. If we look at the graph, um, we don't go through the day by days anymore, but you can see here, obviously the high red lines are our consumption, where we had to import um, those that bits from the grid. Where you see the green, that is obviously the solar production. And then most of the time you've got blue matching the green, because obviously the old idea is that we maximize and utilize as much of that solar energy as we can. So you can see April was a really odd month. Uh, it started off a little bit poor, then kind of peaked and then kind of went off downhill towards the end. But again, we will pick out a couple of the key dates um, from April. But one of the things that I always like to do is compare um, the solar generation to last year. So we can see on this other graph here, if we look down to April, uh, obviously the green bar being 2021, um, it wasn't as good as 2020, but was slightly better than 2019. So yeah, this April's just been a strange month here for me um, in the UK. I don't know what it's been like um, for yourselves. As always, I'll ask you to leave some comments down below. How's your system compared? You've had a good month of April compared to previous ones or not so much. Uh, and also take this opportunity to like this video. That'd be really appreciated. Helps with the YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing and pressing that notification bell will be much appreciated. So if I just pick out a couple of days. Um, the best day it, we had in April was here on the 23rd. So towards the end of the month, the system generated 52 0.14 kilowatt hours of electricity. We self-consumed 84% uh, of that and we did export, which is where you can see the big kind of green area there. With the, the batteries and the system, there's always gonna be some grid pool. It's typically around um, a kilowatt a day, but as you can see here, we've got 2.07 kilowatt hours imported. But again, that's easily offset. Um, by the export and this is just battery cycling and the way I have my battery set up which is I, have, I did another video on recently during the off peak it will make its own decision if it should pull anything from the grid or um, you know just self consume itself from the battery and I think the previous days hadn't been as good which is why it decided um, it would be more efficient to pull from the grid but a really good generation day there almost getting close to my top ever generation day which I think was 56 kilowatt hours I'm not sure if I'll ever get to 60 um, but we shall see another couple of days that are worth talking about so I think this is the worst performing day um, that we had in April so only 11.59 kilowatt hours generated obviously we consumed most of that but we did have to you know import uh, almost half uh, of our electricity so you can see obviously on the graph those Early morning usage is during the off peak, so that's fine. In between half 12 and half past four, it's only five pence a kilowatt hour. But then in the morning when hair dryers and toasters and all sorts of stuff are happening, we're, we're pulling from the grid because obviously the power wall um, wasn't full there. And obviously into the evening, um, we'd just run out of um, any solar surplus that we'd managed to store into the battery. And then if we look at one of the other last uh, call out days this is just another one we had good solar generation um but i had some trips to do this month so you can see here um we, we had to charge um, one of the cars in the evening hence you know, importing 33.22 kilowatt hours from the grid to charge a car but again um even though it, it's a lot of electricity to to pull in to charge a car still much cheaper than petrol and again at only five pence uh, per kilowatt hour it, it's really kind of cheap and affordable so uh, let me grab my phone and we'll talk about the information from the eddy the zappy and the power wall too and then we'll finish up with just some stats on obviously i'm still paying back um the cost of the solar to myself as it were but if this system was fully paid for um the cost savings that uh kind of implied because I also have the feed-in tariff, but also if I didn't have the feed-in tariff, how much would I got paid for the amount of electricity that I exported 
um, in April. And my goal always is not to export anything, um, even if I wasn't on the feed-in tariff, because I want to maximize that in my batteries, in my car, into hot water, etc. So I'll grab my phone and I'll be right back. Okay, so as usual, I'll put the information up on the screen as I go through it. So I start off with the Eddy. So I managed to put a whopping 100 kilowatt hours of solar surplus into heating hot water, which was actually really good for um, the month of April. So I'm really happy with that. In terms of the car charging, we obviously still did pull a reasonable amount from the grid to have to charge the cars because the, the solar surplus wasn't always there. And we had quite a few, you know, several hundred mile journeys we had to do, which meant we had to charge up uh, fully before we're going on them. So I managed to get 62% of it from the grid and 38% uh, from solar surplus. So that equates to 152.50 kilowatt hours from the grid and 93.65 kilowatt hours um, from surplus solar, which I still think is really good. You know, nearly. You know, nearly 100 kilowatt hours of uh, free motoring there, which is pretty good. And then if we look at uh, the power wall, obviously some of this is coming from off-grid charging, but most of it this month actually came from solar surplus. I managed to get 317 kilowatt hours of energy from the battery um, to obviously power the house, which means, again, we're not having to pull from the grid if it's from solar surplus or if it is uh, from the grid, it's, during, it's from off-peak energy. So, it's, you know, means that we can run the house uh, using grid paid for um, power at a third of the price because the Optus Go tariff. So if we look back, um, just to kind of finish the video off at um, the performance of the system. So again, we did export um, 0.11 megawatt hours of electricity. So had we been not, excuse me, on the feeding tariff like I am, um, and was on export tariff, we only would have got paid £5.50 for the export, which is better than nothing. But again, I'm trying to minimise my export. So if your system was a little bit different, but let's just give you some indication. That's assuming you get paid five pence um, per kilowatt that you exported. That would be the situation here. Because um, I am on the feeding tariff, I got in there quite late. So I get um, 0 0.04 pence pretty much for every... Uh, kilowatt that I generate and then they have an export uh, tariff which is 0 0.55 pence per kilowatt uh, and the way they work this out is they don't have an export meter but they assume that I export 50% of everything I generate so um, again in this example I would have been paid that 0 0.04 pence for 1.01 megawatt hours and then they would have taken that in half and then paid me 0.05 pence for half um, of that, so yeah, 500 uh, kilowatt hours or whatever it would have been. Um, so what that means is, uh, under the fit tariff that I'm on, I get paid 41.66 pence uh, this month for the solar that I generated. I get paid 27 pounds and 78 pence um, on the export uh, portion of that, even though I didn't export anywhere near half, only 0.11 megawatt hours. And then if I'd had to buy that solar energy that I've generated, that would have been the equivalent of 124 pounds and 85 pence of electricity from the grid. So if you kind of combine those both, um, with a bit of man maths, you can say that, you know, I kind of saved myself 194 pounds, um, 29. Obviously I'm not saving myself anything at the moment, but that money goes into kind of the payback of the solar PV system. And I do a video on that once a year. So I'll, I'll do it again when we get to the three year mark or wherever it is, or four year mark, I lose track. Um, but with the battery, it's about eight or nine years, I think it was, um, if you're not including the, the saving of petrol that I get from obviously charging the electric cars, which drastically um, reduces the payback time. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope these videos still continue to be helpful. I'll continue doing the monthly solar updates. Again, leave some comments down below about how well your system performed so we can compare and contrast. And again, as mentioned before, please consider liking, subscribing, and touching that uh, bell notification icon to be notified of other Spectrum Geeks videos. So that's it for now. I hope you're all doing well and your families are safe. 
Take care and I'll catch you in the next month's update. Bye for now.